the testosterone reference ranges uh, nowadays they have oh. gone so low and yeah. probably by uh, because they are uh, based on a sick uh, or low t population really yeah. so um yeah and it's even different from country to country and from year to year so it all changes up but not for the better so let's talk about that feeling yeah so so you say it changes from country to country but believe it or not it changes from region to region within countries so i had an email not long ago from um, a professor of endocrinology in liverpool now in the uk i work in what's called the midlands so in the middle of the uk and liverpool's in the north so it's above me and I was shocked at the blood range, these laboratory bloods that were sent to me attached to this email with the reference range saying that the total test, the acceptable low testosterone, total testosterone level was two nanomoles per liter to be considered normal. And, and, and then, but in the Midlands, the low there is, is eight. Like so, and then if you look, um, just a, if you go a little bit um, east uh, in the Midlands, I'm in the West Midlands, um, then uh, you, you find that it's up by two and it's 10. So it's, it, you know, obviously they're looking at local populations um, and, and pooling their averages from there. But the, the disparity between the different regions of the same country is absolutely mind boggling. And when you when you look at it, I, I got particularly interested by the one in Liverpool with it being so low at two. And then I looked at the uh, the rates of obesity there. And it's almost 90 percent obese. In the, in the, and, and that's what that's what makes me have this theory that it's it's aromatase <laughs> it's it's just converting all these guys testosterone into estrogen and then that's making it appear like that's a normal range and and i think that's a huge factor and then you've of course got other comorbidities as well um so you'll you'll always have genetic factors you'll always have other diseases and other pathologies but the the one thing that i see that is a common denominator in the uk especially is is this this overweight issue like that's uh, that's specifically amongst men but also women as well but when we talk about testosterone levels i'm convinced that it is because uh, there's there's an obesity crisis and that we can't really be basing our um treatment criteria on those kinds of numbers from that population we need to be looking at, we need to be stratifying is and it will be a lot of work but we should stratify it into into body type and age because that way you are going to get a much better and more stratified way of looking at whether someone is actually deficient and then you can actually say to yourself these aren't arbitrary numbers anymore like when you're looking at when you're looking at actual endocrine hormones i really need to stress that because <laughs> the ligands that we circulate in our bloodstream they are endocrine messengers <laughs> like, like but if you're trying to if you're trying to measure something that is an autocrine or an intracrine measure in the blood and when it's really tissue specific then it's only a, at best like i said a surrogate marker and you need to take that with a pinch of salt this is the whole thing about you know managing estrogen and things it's like you know you, you you i've seen guys that have you know uh, according to paper off the charts estradiol but they're absolutely fine they have no negative symptoms they have no blood pressure issues they have no water retention issues they have no acne issues and they have no fatigue or energy issues their libido's fine and you would not know by talking to them or looking at them or measuring their vital signs that anything was wrong but then this number comes up and then people just go oh we need to we need to push that down <laughs> and it's and, it, and you've got to ask yourself why that is because if you've got someone who's asymptomatic uh then uh, you're just looking at a number and going well because this book or this paper says it needs to be here what what are we doing we're not <laughs> we're not treating our patients we're treating ourselves because that's anxiety that we're treating it's uh, it's anxiety that there might be some form of harm which is a good a good worry to have as a clinician because we you know primum non necessary first do no harm is the is the motto of anybody looking after someone in an autonomous manner but at the same time i think we're we're all well educated enough in doing the jobs that we're doing like i'm sure you're the same with your dermatology clinic you know what you're doing because of your training and your experience and it's your clinical experience that needs to be be drawn upon in situations where you've got these um what i call clinical paradoxes where the book says something but the, the patient in front of you is doing something else and we need to we need to be able to uh, to to answer for those and we can do that for ourselves because we're well-educated people. It's uh, it's 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 something that, that boggles my mind looking at these reference ranges and how they're different and letting them dictate what we do. Mm -hmm. And how do you go about patients with a um, low testosterone number and uh, low testosterone symptoms, but that still fall within the ranges? You can still treat them, right? Yeah. So 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 this is it. So if you uh, if you have an overwhelming amount of qualitative symptoms and you're say say yeah, just just above the borderline low, but you're low for your age based on 
I, I, you know, I should use my words carefully, what I call proper reference ranges, you know, of healthy people, then you, you, well, I don't think a trial of TRT is out of the question. And that's something that, I, again, you have to take um, a, a sort of bit of a responsibility for as a clinician. Like you, you, you know, if they say, for example, the, the, the number here is 12 nanomoles per litre and uh, they're 13, but you've got a guy sitting there in front of you that is low mood, erectile dysfunction, uh, loss of all sense of self, can't even get out of bed for work, his energy is so low. He's gaining weight because his diet's bad because he's, he's so low in mood. You, you want to help that guy. Like, so, you know, and, and, in, and in private practice, we do have a little bit of flexibility to go, right, let's see how this goes. And if they're young, uh, there's always the possibility that if, we, if it doesn't do uh, anything positive for them or alleviate those qualitative symptoms, then you can, you can taper them off. And if needs be, you can use uh, certain re medical restart protocols um, you know, combinations of things like HCG and selective estrogen receptor modulators, and you can restart their HPG axis again. Um, yeah, so I think, you know, there is room, excuse me, there's room for uh, for looking at these people that don't quite fit within what the, what the book says we should do, and actually being able to help them, because at the end of the day, that's why they're coming to us, because we're a private clinic that, that can help where, and have the time to help them where the NHS is stretched. Check out my TRT workout split or the ebook The Ultimate Guide to TRT Cream. Links to the merchandise shop in the description.